Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're going to be going over a little bit of a setup tour but not this setup. I actually have a home server rack in the basement of my house and we're going to be touring that and taking a look at just what type of networking gear I have down there, what type of servers I'm running down there, that sort of thing. I'm just going to kind of give you a basic overview of what that entire server rack looks like and uh, possibly some thoughts on uh, what I want to do in the future to upgrade it. So this is actually where I want some of your thoughts as you watch through this video. Let me know in those comments down below uh, what you would change about it, what you would improve about it, what you might uh, do differently had you been the one in charge of putting together this sort of home server center. And keep in mind, the vast majority of everything down there comes off of eBay. So if it's on the server rack and you're like, mm, I'm not really sure I would have went that direction. A lot of that reasoning was probably because the price was just right. So with all that said, let's hop downstairs and check out the Hoosier Hardware Server Center. That does not have a nice ring to it, but that's what we're going with. Okay, so here we are in the basement below uh, the office or studio or whatever you wanna call where I film my videos. This is my server rack, and we're gonna start right up here at the very top with the, uh, I guess, the network interfaces. And that, uh, first off, we have a Zyxel uh, ISP-provided router, uh, and that is gonna be the, probably one of the last major things to change about this setup is that guy is going to get replaced by a PFSense uh, rack mounted uh, router setup at some point, but at the moment that's uh, just kind of chilling out there because, well, it does a decent job and uh, it's also low power. Also, my ISP gives those to us for free. So that's not actually being rented. Like I don't have to pay extra money for that to just chill out here, which is also probably part of the reason I haven't got on getting it replaced is it's free unlike something from probably Comcast where you might pay $10 a month or so. Now over here to the right is a Rockspace mesh Wi-Fi system. And uh, this was actually sent out by Rockspace and I told them I wouldn't really give it a dedicated video because it's not really the type of thing I do very often. However, uh, they did say that if I was gonna do a network overhaul here, that uh, I could you know, test it out and if I liked it, I could uh, toss in a video like this where I'm kind of doing an overview and yeah, this thing is actually really solid. This isn't gonna get into a uh, review or anything like that, uh, but I will say with this Rockspace mesh system, there were three of these access points that come with it. You can run it either in a bridge setup like I do where it's actually not acting as a router, or you can run them as standalone routers. They have a couple gigabit ethernet ports on the bottom of them, and uh, they actually blend in pretty well with a, a sort of warm and cozy environment in like a living room or something like that. They have this sort of, uh, I guess it's like an espresso. It probably looks black right now, but it's actually kind of like an espresso uh, type thing here and uh, has sort of this fabric top. Uh, they're pretty small units as well and they work quite well. I have them sort of spaced out throughout my house and yeah, I'm really happy with these things. I'll throw the link to their Amazon listing down below uh, because they are a little bit cheaper than most of the uh, sort of bigger names in the mesh Wi-Fi system space. So if you're interested in a fairly inexpensive and really solid mesh Wi-Fi system, if that's something you're looking for in your house, these actually get a solid recommendation. I've been really happy with those. Now at the top of the actual rack itself is a drawer. And this is something that I love about this particular uh, setup is just this 2U drawer because I keep all my random cables and uh, the keys to get into the front of the servers and that sort of thing all just in that drawer because I'm not really looking for these keys to be any sort of security issue. Um, I'm at home, so I don't really need to use these keys, but my, my cases do have keys, so I just kind of leave the key chilling out there and uh, leave it right there. And uh, yeah, the drawer is super useful. It's something that I highly recommend just to keep a bunch of cables and things that you're gonna need on your server setup uh, handy. The drawer is really nice. Now down below this, we have a Dell uh, LED console. And this thing has sort of unique uh, rails that are supposed to be used on it and unfortunately I couldn't find those rails anywhere for an affordable cost so instead I sort of built this uh, this 1U platform for it to sit on. I just had some spare wood laying around that I cut 
and uh, then mounted the actual rails to the wood itself and then I actually just mounted the actual console itself on top of my homemade platform. So a 1U console normally, this is now a 2U console, but it, it works reasonably well. And the rails are sort of stiff. I did get them second hand, so the rails themselves are not great, but that's the console itself that hooks into both of my servers. Now below that is my KVM. This is a uh, VGA KVM. I actually got this sort of on the recommendation of uh, a craft computing video. It looks super simple from what he had. Uh, I don't know if it's the same brand. It may be a slightly different brand, but it's virtually the same thing that he's running in his rack. Basically, you have uh, eight inputs on the back and it does use VGA, but it also passes through USB. And now I can just switch from uh, one of my servers to the other one just with the push of a button and it routes everything up then to the console itself where I can basically treat it like a computer monitor, a trackpad, a keyboard, everything I need to get a, uh, a server up and running is right here routing through the KVM up to the console itself and it works really nicely. Now just below the KVM is my gigabit switch and that's just because I knew I needed several uh, gigabit ports down here. I bought basically the cheapest gigabit switch I could find on eBay and uh, yeah, it, it, it works exactly as you would think it would but yeah it works just fine it's an unmanaged switch it's just a dumb switch it it does its job now here's where we get to the servers themselves this top one is a uh, a Skylake i5 so four cores four threads and this is actually a Windows server and the mindset with this server is I can remote into it from anywhere in my house and get it doing things like render projects that can be just done in the background I can set it forget it and then keep using my main system as just a, a system to do whatever else I need to do on it without it actually taking up that resource. Now, I haven't done a whole lot with this just yet, but the good news with it is it runs in its hibernation mode pretty much all the time. And I measured the wattage at something like 0.5 watts or 0.8 watts when it's in hibernate mode. So uh, it, it basically just sits here and idles at that 0 0.5, 0 0.8 watts and very seldom actually does anything. But this is a machine I'm actually looking for some projects to do and some, some cool little things that you can do with a Windows server. So I'm looking into doing some of those things with this server. If I find something that's really interesting, you'll definitely see videos about it in the future. But for the moment, it mostly just chills out here and doesn't do a whole lot. It is in a Rosewill mining server chassis. So this thing actually has like six places to mount GPUs on the inside of it, but it has no IO uh, PCIe ports on the back. So I can't actually install a traditional graphics card in the traditional way into the motherboard without swapping out this case. So this case is probably gonna go at some point in lieu of something like, I don't know, I might put in a 2U server with roughly the same hardware at some point. But for now, uh, since the case wasn't doing anything, it's doing its job. Obviously, I have plenty of space left in my rack anyways, so I'm not really too concerned about using a 4U server chassis when I could get away with a 2U one very easily. And then we come to my bottom chassis here, and this is my actual storage server. This is running Unraid, and that's mostly for the simplicity of I can always add disks to my array and expand the storage without having to have everything up front. That's the main reason I went with Unraid. But basically behind these fans, you have an array of hard drives and they're a little bit spaced out because I think I have room for something like 15 hard drives and I'm only, only gonna run like four or five right now. And as I expand, I can't really imagine ever getting much over like seven or eight hard drives at a time in there. But they're mostly either 10 terabyte or eight terabyte drives. And they just plug along in Unraid. And this is where all of my footage gets stored from the channel. So I never have to delete videos. Now, someday in the distant future, I may have to, but you know, I'm running off of a Panasonic G85 camera. So my file sizes are nowhere near as large as uh, some other uh, YouTubers out there that are running like red 8k cameras or things like that So storing my footage in a server like this is perfectly feasible I think right now I have something like 15 terabytes available in the pool with redundancy obviously, but uh, I only have like 8 terabytes of it used So I've still got plenty of time to get more hard drives for this server and get it going uh, With even more storage, but for the moment and for the foreseeable future. This is just fine for me
And finally, we have a UPS at the bottom. And the only thing that this is powering with its battery is the storage server itself. Uh, everything else runs through this, except it's just the surge protector part of it. And the whole point of this UPS is it's run with USB and connected with USB to the actual storage server. So when my power goes out and when the battery power dips below, I think 50%, my storage server will automatically do a safe power down. So when my power goes out, which because of where I live, somewhat rural-ish area, that does happen from time to time. And when it does, my power doesn't always come back immediately. So when I have a power outage that, from a storm that may last you know, two or three hours, this thing will automatically power itself down because it's hooked into uh, the UPS here. And that way I never have to worry about my data being corrupted because of a random power outage in the middle of the day. I'm not really looking for any more functionality with a UPS than just the ability to let this thing power down safely. So for my purposes and for my setup, that does its job just fine. So like I said, guys, let me know in those comments down below all your thoughts on the Hoosier hardware server setup in general, what you would do differently, what you would add to it, what you would take away from it. All those thoughts are very much appreciated because uh, this is one of those things I am by no means a home server expert. This is just sort of a, a fun little project on the side that I put together and it will be constantly evolving just like the main setup up here in my office is always constantly evolving. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter, at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube keep up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.